good to see everybody out today on this wet and dreary day, but it's another good day to come out and worship God this morning. So, welcome, 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 and if you'll open your bulletin up with me and look along in the announcements, we we'll to go over a few of those and we'll continue on with our service. Uh, everybody, please make plans to be here today at 345 um, for our quarterly church council meeting to discuss church business and plan events for this quarter. And this is an open this is an open meeting to everybody, and everyone involved with our church is encouraged to attend today. So please make plans to be here if you can today at 3:45. Uh, and following our meeting to, our meeting today, we we'll have worship and Bible study, which begins at 5 p.m. And please make an effort to come back out. Um, if you're here for the meeting, just just stay with us and um, come back out for another time of worship today. And uh, our district men's club will meet on Thursday at 6 p.m. at Rainbow City First United Methodist Church. And if you haven't been involved with this group in the past, uh, please make an effort this year to come and represent our church and in fellowship with other men in our district. Uh, there will be delicious meals served for $5 and a speaker to follow, which will be Herman Spicer, and he will be speaking on the translation of the English Bible. So please, uh, all men... If you uh, if you'd like to go, please uh, please see me or JW or call us or something, and I'm sure we'll be able to come on, pick them up if they want to go. So uh, if you'd like to go, just just see one of us. And everyone, uh, I said this last week uh, to bring your directors today, but since we're having our meeting today, uh, we're going to have our calendar and stuff discussed this uh, this evening. So. Um, everyone, please bring your church directory in the white binder next Sunday, January 24th, so all the information inside can be updated for 2010. And don't forget our monthly food bank ministry. All those uh, donations will be taken after the 31st of this month, and always please be in prayer for this ministry and its workers. All right, do we have any other announcements today before we continue on? We're glad to have Frankie back. Yes, ma'am, we are. We have you back with us. We've got several out. Um, uh, so we need to be in prayer for those, too. They're, they're not here with us this morning. Anything else before we, before we open our service? Keep Diane Hunley in your prayer. She brought her offering to me, but she wouldn't come in yesterday. Because she said she was afraid she was contagious. Uh -oh. I told her she didn't. No, I've been out. Yeah, like I said, we got several out that are either having family issues or um, just out sick or whatever, or traveling. So we need to remember all those in our church that are out traveling today for whatever reason. All right, let's open with prayer. Father, again, we come to you this morning. Um, to worship you and to lift your name up. And uh, we ask that you come into this service, fill each and every one of our hearts with your precious Holy Spirit, and move us in a, in a direction we need, that we need to go, and uh, to, to put our focus, and help us to put our focus on worshiping you in, in this hour here that we are here in your house this morning. And, uh, and help us to put all these worldly issues aside and and uh, just, like I said, just to focus on, on worshiping you this morning. Father, uh, be with those that are not able to be here this morning. And, uh, and for those that have come out in, in, in the dreary weather, I uh, pray a special blessing on each and every family and uh, person that's represented here today. And uh, Father, just uh, continue with us now as we uh, continue to lift your name up in song and, and uh, by doing the things we do in this service. And, and uh, maybe our pastor should bring our message to us this morning. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah. Let's worship together this morning with him 133. <laughs>
faith, which is from the Apostles' Creed. Please stand when you find the page. 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I'll ask our ushers to come up to receive the willing offering today. Father, we come to you in this time of the service to return the portion of our gifts and offerings back to you. I pray that you bless this offering and may it be used to further your kingdom here on earth and uh, further the ministries of our church and the church abroad. Um, Father, I pray for those that are not able to give this morning. I pray that you would bless them in their life and and uh, and just just let, again just bless this offering to for your for your church here. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
as we enter into this time of prayer, do we have any additional prayer concerns or joys to share with one another? I have a friend that uh, her granddaughter was in a wreck not before last, and she enjoyed being her and her little boy also. Her name is Teresa Harris. So y'all be praying for her, and my joy is that Frank is sitting over there. <laughs> I thank the Lord for that. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. <laughs> I think we're all happy you're back. Yeah, we're so glad she feels like being back. Yes. Do you remember Jerry Curry, her son John, and his wife, um, she emailed me about 3 o'clock this morning saying that um, their son and his wife had, had two houses in Southside and the baby one burned last night. And, um, Jerry said that she was out standing in the rain all about 3 a.m. last night with him. So uh, we need to remember them. And, uh, and everybody, everybody knows what happened this week in Haiti. But uh, I, I've been watching the news coverage of it all week, and I'm just, I'm just sitting here thinking as I'm watching it, I was like, you know, how blessed we are to be able to, you know, come here and, and uh, worship God this one in a, in a warm building. You know, the people that was the poorest country in, our, in the Western Hemisphere. And uh, the people barely had anything before, now they have nothing. So let's, let's remember them and all the people that are down there helping. It's joy the Lord. It is. It is joy to be here. Um, I have a prayer request um, for um, Matt Miller's family. Matt Miller is a, uh, was a um, pastor at um, Probst Memorial. United Methodist Church, and yesterday he was duck hunting with his father in Arkansas on vacation, and he drowned. So please be with his family and with his church. Um, they will be missing him. Young man um, who was still, he had, was finishing seminary um, this spring to be ordained, and um, so please be with him. I mean, his family is, is, and his church as they mourn the loss of the man. Any others? Yes, uh, Ruth Gall has fallen again, and she's waiting for surgery again. She fractured another vertebrae, and she said that she would like to have some company. Uh, if anyone had the time, feel Is free to talk to her. She's at home, but she's waiting until they go. Let us pray. God, with all of our hearts, we find refuge in you. You created all things, God, and you are a merciful Father to us. You are the source of all that is good in our lives. For this, we thank you, God. We know that sometimes we have been selfish, thinking only of ourselves, forgetting all the promises that we have made to you. We've not always been obedient, not always seeking to do your will, but doing our own will. Write your law, Lord, upon our hearts, and forgive us, we pray. Lord, we come to you each week, each day, with our petitions and our prayers for those around us, those that we love, those that we know. Lord, today we pray for those that are sick in body, mind, and spirit. Heal them as only you can. Lord, we pray for all who are lonely, Help us to see their loneliness and be their friend. God, we pray for those who mourn. We ask for you to comfort them. And Lord, we pray for those who might be in some kind of danger. You know all the kinds of danger out there. Lord, protect them and give them courage and strength. Lord, and specifically, we pray for the people of Haiti. 
They're mourning their dead. They are hurt and sick. They are hungry and thirsty. Open the door so that those that can help will be able to help. And lastly, Lord, we pray for ourselves. Create in us a clean heart. We ask these things in your Son's holy name. Amen. Amen. Choir is going to sing this morning, Reach Out to Jesus. Judah. 
I will not be like, it will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer shall I teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Last week, we had a remembrance of your baptism service. What a wonderful thing to remember is your baptism. But if you looked in the hymnal, it's, they have the baptismal service at the beginning, and they don't call it a baptismal service. They call it a baptismal covenant. Because after all, we are making a covenant with God when we baptize someone. And part of those baptismal vows that we make, and you could, if you wanted to pull the hymnal out, it's written right there in black and white. We say we will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Well, our hymnals don't say, and our witness. At the 2008 General Conference, they added that to the baptismal covenant, feeling it was important not only for us to pray and be present and give our gifts and our service, but also to be willing to share our testimony, our witness with others. We are a covenant people. We make covenant with God. It has been through our history, all through the Bible, People were making covenant with God. Now, the history in the book of Jeremiah, the one that I read from this morning, Jeremiah was a prophet that gave warnings of things that would, would come to pass and things that had come to pass. Judah, the house of Judah, was, was taken over by the Babylonians. They were deported. And Jerusalem had been destroyed. And the house of Israel had been taken over by the Assyrians and they were in exile. But Jeremiah was saying that once they had suffered their punishment and take, taken responsibility for their actions, the promise of restoration of the house of Israel and the house of Judah were there. God says, I will make a new covenant. Much like the Sinai covenant that God made with Moses. But unfortunately, that law of Moses, the Ten Commandments, had gotten a little out of hand with legalism. The Jewish law had become something where my, the minute details of people's lives were governed by the law. There are over 600 laws written for the, for the average Jew to follow and obey. One example of, of how minute the detail had gotten that it was that there was only one day between Passover and Pentecost where anyone could get married or get, even get a haircut. Moses, the law of Moses had come down to this kind of foolishness. He had been following this old covenant for over 6,000 years. And as one would come and ask for an explanation of the law, more details to the law would be added and more foolishness. God was not trying to replace that old covenant with a new covenant. He was trying to... Make it simpler, easier for people to understand. One that they would not have to refer to a big book of laws, but one that would be written on their hearts. This new covenant was not so much a new thing, 
but a new work of God. He was trying to restore the full meaning and measure of his covenant with Israel. He was trying to graft the wild olive branch into the blessings and the promise of the covenant that God had made with Abraham and Abraham's descendants and with all those that had come by faith. You see, you and I are grafted into the covenant of Abraham. We are a covenant people. The Bible is chiefly an account of God's dealing with humanity through covenants. Now, a covenant is more than just an agreement or a contract between two people. It's a special kind of relationship in which the parties pledge themselves to one another. Biblical covenants find their roots in the sovereign will of God. See, God is always works through the covenants he establishes and according to his sovereign decree. He always works in the confines of the covenant. We are a covenant society. But we always don't stick to our covenants. Over and over again, covenants are made with God and Scripture, and humanity breaks them. We can go back as far as Adam and Eve. They were made covenant with God and with God that they would be allowed to dwell in the garden and they would know an intimate God. They would relate perfectly with God. But as with all covenants, there are conditions. And that the fulfillment of the covenant always rests with God. You see, we are given free will so that our love for one another and our love for God has the ability to be genuine and not forced. Well, Adam and Eve chose poorly in regard to their responsibilities in the covenant. They made promises and they were broken. But God always remains faithful. Noah and God made covenant. God promised they would never flood the earth again. And he sealed it with a rainbow. Abraham and God entered into a covenant. Covenant. You see, God demonstrated His glory, not ours, when He had went to an elderly man and an elderly woman well past the age of childbearing. And God chose to demonstrate His goodness to the world by giving them a child. This covenant is spelled out in Genesis. But later, in a lowly manger, a child is born. A child that is raised in a backwater town in Galilee called Nazareth that becomes the Savior to the world to fulfill the promise of Abraham and the prophecy of Jeremiah. We find this in Christ. God always fulfills His covenant. Now, covenant is not our bargaining with God. It's not our saying, hey, God, um, if you will do this for me, then I will do this for you. Covenants are not rooted in the will of men, not rooted in what we want, what we desire, but they are rooted in the will of the almighty, everlasting God. God initiates covenant. It is always God-centered. And the people's response is shown in their obeying the law of the covenant. We hear about the law of Moses, the Ten Commandments, the Torah, that were written on tablets of stone. They became a monument. They were placed in a container that they called the Ark of the Covenant. You see, those Ten Commandments are a covenant that Moses made on behalf of the people with God. These became a, a, a place of pilgrimage. People would come and, and have a look at the ark, would come and visit it, much like we might go to historic sites. How many of you have been to Washington, D.C. to see the Washington Monument? or the Lincoln Memorial, 
Or maybe you went to see the giant ball of twine somewhere. We go to places and we view, and sometimes in our viewing and then returning home, we forget the importance of why that item is there, why we've gone, why we look at it as a monument. We forget the covenant that is behind it. God says he will no longer rely on things written on tablets of stone, but he was going to write this new covenant, this new law, this new agreement on their hearts, on the hearts of his people. It would become not just a thing that they remembered, but part of their life. It would be more about them knowing God, moving this idea of covenant from their heads into their hearts. God says, I am going to wipe out all debt of transgression. I will forgive everything and remember their sin no more. And everyone will always be faithful. That this pact that I make will last forever. This new covenant that God was making was had the old covenant in mind. It was the announcement of the salvation of the world. It's the only reference in the Old Testament to the New Testament covenant that we receive in Jesus Christ. Jeremiah had a vision for the future, a future that was found in Jesus Christ and the forgiveness we receive from God. We make a covenant with God. I mentioned before about that baptismal covenant, the one where we promise to faithfully participate in the ministries of our church, it reminds us of the faithfulness of God. You see, God is not just with us on Sunday mornings when we gather together in this place. God is with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, year after year, forever and ever. And we promise to be faithful in our participations in the ministry of the church. Not just the church that is this building and this group of people, but in the church that God has created throughout the world. We promise to be there praying. We promise to be there with our presence. We promise to be there with our gifts, our service, and our witness. And these laws are written on our hearts. All the laws of Moses, all Ten Commandments are part of that covenant. God says, I am yours and you are mine. He uses a language of love and faithfulness that we use with those around us. I am yours. You're mine. You'll open your hymnal to page 607. You'll see the Wesley Covenant Prayer. We said this prayer last week. This is a prayer that Wesley wrote, remembering the covenant of God, remembering what God, what Jeremiah prophesied of what God was going to do. That God was going to be their God and we would be his people. They would forgive their sin and remember it no more. And I would like us to pray this prayer together. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me at what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee. Lay aside for thee, exalted for thee, or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty, let me have all things, let me have nothing. 
I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified. We give ourselves to God to do with as God chooses to use us when he can use us to let us step aside as he uses someone else. Thou art mine and I am thine. God said, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. God says, I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Thanks be to God.